Let me call to order um, the August 24th, 2022 meeting of the Westford Conservation Commission. August 24th. Oh, 2022, sorry. I was, I was like, August 22. I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> no, okay. That's not today. <laughs> so, um, the should I mention that Noelle's on the phone, or are we just kind of? Uh, we can, yeah. so that'll, yeah. help, okay. that'll help the minutes take her. Okay, so we have in attendance um, Eric Foley, Vice Chair, Marilyn Frank, Noelle Donovan on the phone, and Jeffrey's in person, and myself, Margaret Wheeler. Um, the first agenda item is open forum. Um, anything from members of the commission? Matt? Um, the special town meeting is October, is October 17th. October 17th um, at uh, Westford Academy. Yep. Um, the like strategic it. planning retreat oh, is scheduled for uh, September 8th. 8th. Yes, I'm, I'm working. <laughs> um, and so those, in terms of those, uh, all votes will be by roll call tonight with Noel participating remotely. And I was able to confirm uh, 50, the shed at 54 Elm Road uh, was relocated to 30 feet. I think it was 30 feet and two inches uh, from nice. the, right, exactly, you know, um, has been relocated. Um, been a while. They will be getting a, they will be going, uh, preparing for, uh, requesting a certificate of compliance for um, an upcoming meeting to close out the order. Excellent. Uh, you have a street address on that for? 54 Elm. Okay. Um, do members of the audience have anything for open forum? Okay. Um, Matt, are there any of the discussion items we want to take? Um, we could do um, we can do the conservation parcel zero four five zero 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 nine zero 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 zero. The request to archery hunt. Um, this is a annual request um, by the resident in the area to bow hunt on. Um, a conservation commission parcel it's um, kind of bound between Tingsboro Road Forest Road and Groton Road um, he's um, he, he ha we've gave us that little plan of his was, yep the plan showing the, uh, right know, in the areas and distances from the trails um, and this is consistent with what the commission has approved in the past. Uh, we haven't had any incidents um, from the reported from the police department. So, um, up to the commission how they want to. Any after. any questions or comments from the commission? I have the same vote every time. Okay. Um, so, can I have a motion to grant the hunting permission to Christian Hogue? So, I As we have done in prior years. So move. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? No. Noel? No. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. So. Zero. The motion carries. The motion carries. Four one. Four to Three one. Two. Three two. One two. Three Noel. Two. Noel said no. Yeah. Noel said no. Oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Good woman. <laughs> Get to 60. Okay. Um, That's funny. You ready for the 705? Yeah. Okay. So, this is a legal notice under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act, and Westford's Non Zoning Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171. The Westford <coughs> Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 24th. 2022 at 7.05 p.m. in meeting room 201 at Town Hall, 55 Main Street, on the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation application of Michael McCallum for determination of wetland resource areas located at 60 Pleasant Street 
Assessor's Map 053, Parcel 0077, Lot 0000. So this is a newfangled thing that we just got. I'm sorry. About That's that. okay. <laughs> You're one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Can you lift? Oh, he's getting it. Okay. Getting it. Yeah. A little cockeyed. Um, actually, if you could put yeah, it over, over by the microphone so, yeah. and, and angle it so that members of the audience can see as well. Absolutely. I can't see. I apologize for the scale, but it, it's, in, it's a property that we want to show the features on. But Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have it. Sure. Have it on the I have it. I don't know yeah. how, how That's good enough. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, the same thing, then. Fine. So my name is Jacob Tennis, and I'm with Lucas Environmental. And first of all, good evening, and thanks for having us here. Much appreciated. Um, I'm, I'm Jacob Tennis, certified wetland scientist with Lucas uh, Environmental, and um, Paul Campbell here from uh, Chess. Um, and this is uh, for a property at 60 uh, Pleasant Street. And um, the owner is Michael McCallum. And this is for an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation, as uh, you mentioned. Um, we're seeking approval for the delineated resource boundaries that are on the site. Uh, we did have a site walk just uh, this afternoon um, with Matthew. And um, what we looked at where the, was the uh, delineated boarding vegetated wetland around the property and the bank down by the pond and there's a, a vernal pool area. Um, this is a 10-acre property, an existing residential property. There's a home on there that um, I believe is unoccupied, and um, it has a, a, a detached garage and, and sort of a porch in the back and uh, you know driveway and landscaped areas and such that are now overgrowing. Um, if you turn your attention to this, it might be easier to see, but this is the driveway coming in from Pleasant Street, long driveway down here. Forge Pond is down in this area, and what's denoted by the green uh, is the delineated wetland boundary here. So you actually have a little bit of an upland piece here, but this all connects out to a much larger wetland area that also connects the Forge Pond down in here. I apologize, the bank is not showing on here. I was going to use a blue Sharpie pen, and then I ran out of time. I said, I got to get going. I couldn't find it, but nevertheless, it's down in here. The wetland line comes up in here and down, and down across in here. Um, the vernal pool that I spoke of is, is up in this location here in purple. And we did go out here. We were out here for four days delineating, so we checked it each time. Uh, we found three spotted salamander egg masses, uh, some green frogs and a bullfrog, but nothing much else. It has a permanent drainage outlet, um, so there was no obligate species, rare species there. The obligate species are the spotted salamanders. The facultative species are the, the, the bullfrog and the wood and the um, green frogs, I'm sorry. Interestingly, no wood frog egg masses. We couldn't find any wood frog egg masses or tadpoles. So it's not a very productive pool is what I'm, what I'm getting at. Um, we were there at the optimal time of the year at the end of April and, and early May. Nevertheless, it's all contained within the wetland itself. This is a, a, a mostly a forested wetland. Over in this area, it turns more into a shrubs um, down along the edge of the, uh, along the, edge of the uh, uh, open water area. It almost looked like this has bog characteristics, but this is way off site. Um, not really sure. We didn't go in there. We didn't have permission to go in there. There's no reason to go in there. And then this continues as a large um, forested wetland area, too. Um, there's been historical alterations along the bank of the pond. Um, so we denoted uh, the wetland boundary goes up into the lawn, actually. Um, and there's some maple trees growing in there along the edge. but. To be honest with you, this has probably been in that state for many, many years, 20, 30, 40 years even, who knows. Um, we look back on historical maps, it's hard to tell. Um, the vegetation was cut several years ago, so there's woody plants that were cut along in here. But it's all starting to grow back now. There's a lot of cattails down in here on this edge. And then this is an open sandy area that geese sort of prefer because there's grass in there. Um, and they sort of, and there's a dock on the property next door here. Nevertheless, um, as I said, there's, there's, a, there's a wetland boundary that comes up into the lawn in here. Um, so those are your two 
major uh, resource areas. Uh, there's also the floodplain in here, which is denoted on this other line that kind of comes inside the um, inside or just outside the wetland boundary edge because it floods in from here. And um, I think that's elevation by elevation. Yeah, 207. 207. Okay. So that's the official FEMA floodplain elevation. So that that comes into the property as well. So what that means is all all of this in here is upland. This is all upland forest. This is this is the notes here where you can see the trees aren't here. It's kind of an open plateaued area where I think they might have had an old garden. It's an overgrown field. There's some old firewood stacked up in there. And so that's it for the resources. Um, I I can get into details on vegetation and that sort of thing if you folks would have any questions or, or questions on the vernal pool or the features. I'm happy to happy to entertain any questions. So when did you go out and look at the the species in the Bruno pool? Uh, I believe it was April 28th, and then again on May 6th, May 8th, Is May 10th, 12th. It's, it's not. A, it's, it's not a certified. It's not even showing on a um, on the DEP database or yeah. Um, so our 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 take was it's not certifiable because of the lack of of species, species. in there. Yeah, and the appropriate species. You need to have a you need to have um, you know, the blue spotted or the Jeffersonian complex. Well, it can be a vernal pool, but it doesn't, so the vernal pool doesn't way. need to contain species of special concern or being threatened to That's be designated right. as a vernal pool. Correct, correct. And it still gets, a vernal pool would still have, you know, in this case, if it had species of special concern, we probably want you to keep the full 100 foot buffer to it. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, you know, it would be treated like a wetland a wetland or a resource area where we typically want you to stay at least 50 feet away from the resource area. Okay, understood. Okay. Yeah, and it's all it's all contained within the wetland, so you do have the 100 foot that comes off the edge of the wetland. I do want to note there's been some fill piles and things put in here, and we denoted that on the plan itself, so a potential area of fill. It, it's almost like somebody put a little driveway, or not a driveway, but it's packed gravel and stone, and I, I couldn't even auger through it. It's so dense and packed. Um, nevertheless, we're considering the you know the boundaries delineated around it. But when you take a buffer off of it, it actually just treats it like a straight line because it's such a small area. If you understand what I mean by pulling back the buffer, it just meets outside anyway, as though there was nothing there. So it's it's basically an area that you know should there be development at some point and they need to do a replication area, it, it might be a good spot to say, hey, well, you got to pull that material out and you can recreate wetlands in there. Well, we probably just have you pull the material yeah. out anyway. Replication or not, fair enough. Um, because of the scam road, yeah. And that's typically done if anybody. I yeah. Mean, this is the first step. We're seeing. No, yeah. This is just a, re a you know uh, delineation of the resource area. Mm -hmm. This looks good. So a couple things I did note um, more so on the plan than uh, in the field. Every the in in the field um, confirmed. I think it was. We walked the flags uh, from wetland flag A1 through, I think it was 100 even, to be honest. Well, yeah, it uh, ends up 90. 90. 90. I, what, yeah, what is that? Last 90. 90, yeah. Yeah, 99, because 100 on the back side yeah. along Pleasant, which we didn't confirm because it's off off property to. Um, to the rear of the residences back in here. Yeah, so it's, so it's basically you'd have to travel through the wetlands to do anything there, so there won't be anything done there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we wouldn't allow that, I, that cross. I don't think anybody would attempt to propose to do anything there. Yeah. Right? It's just sort of landlocked or um, waterlocked. <laughs> and then also confirmed the bank. Um, I think that's flags one through nine. Um, yeah. To Forge Pond. Yes. Yeah. Um, there were was question about the FEMA flood zone um, and the commission. So on the plans that were provided to the commission, um, there is not a buffer shown to the FEMA, uh, the bordering land subject to flooding, nor the bank. Um, under, the com under the town's bylaw, those two are uh, jurisdictional areas with 100 foot buffers. Um, wanted to confirm, um, A, that both with the commission tonight, but also um, whether that would in require uh, revising 
you know, having a revised plan set provided. I mean, the wetland flags are the wetlands flags. Those are surveyed and, you know, in the specific, you know, the, or at least the, um, yeah, the wetland flags, the bank flags, those are specific locations. Those are um, the uh, bordering land subject to flooding where it is uh, based upon FEMA's 100-year floodplain. Um, that is, uh, you know, or the 100 chance of. Well, how far does that move up from the bank from where the flags are? Um, so, I mean, in terms of the majority of the uh, wetland flags if, um, as shown up here, you know, this is the, the wetland boundary is in here, um, the watering land subject to flooding at elevation 207. Um, I mean, it's pretty close for... Well, it mimics the resource area. And, right. And, and, and well, but it, where it comes outside of it, I mean, are we starting our 50 from there? Well, that's what I... That was something I... I mean, I think... Probably if it's land well, subject to flooding. Right. And also, this is an existing lawn area. This is, you know, the house's existing lawn along uh, Forge Pond. Um, the bordering vegetation, uh, the wetland flags come here. Bank has been delineated in this area. Um, this is all lawn, but this is um, denoted at that elevation 207 as bordering land subject to flooding. So, you know, the question was kind of how this is. How, how are we gonna treat that? Right, I mean, so in terms of, you know, actually the order of resource area delineation and um, confirming the wetland resource areas, um, I mean, those, the flags and, you know, the, the flagged areas between, you know, of the bordering vegetated wetlands and the bank, those are specific locations. Um, and in reality, if a revised FEMA flood map comes, you know, is approved between now and when, you know, any development um, is proposed, obviously that would, you know, whatever the FEMA flood map is at that time, that's what, you know, if it's determined at elevation 207 and that's, you know, it's, there's really not, an interpretation on my part as to well that's it's what it, you know kind of what it is so but I know there was some question by the applicants um, and if the Commission could provide some guidance as to what they would be expected you know what they would um, I think that would be certainly helpful um, going forward and as this uh, any plans get further uh, prepared one point the uh the buffers from the bank are shown on the uh, survey plan. It gets a little muddled because it's near the wetland buffers too, but there's there's lines coming. Oh, up they are here. Yeah, okay. those, those are the those are the bank buffers. Yeah, they sort of intersect with. Might the help wetland. to color. Yeah, yeah. might yeah. help it's to hard color. To see. It. There's so in many the lines. Future, it might help to color something. Gotcha. So you can say, you know. Yeah. So you're looking for guidance now. Yeah, oh, I mean, as they're... Per or is that something we could just mull? Um, they come I mean, back. I, give, I defer to them what they're... Uh, I mean, I think for tonight, just uh, um, establishing the, the wetland and the and bank. And the bank, the resource yeah, areas. the resource delineated. areas. The buffers, mm -hmm. you know, we can... Uh, is, if there's development later, like, that's something... Well, discussion. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, that's a discussion we can have at that time. Going well, forward, right. We can and have Eric, minutes. thinking back to our past practice, when we've had an AMED like this, um, have we ever, you know, has has the determination been restricted to things that can be flagged in the field as opposed to FEMA floodplains or land subject to flooding? I mean, have, has that one? <laughs> no, I, I'm trying to remember when that's come into play. I can't not in my time yeah, with I'm the, trying to this typically is, it's more the well it's it's never the floodplain it's more always the vegetated wetlands and okay. um, so it's it's know, not stream. something that we've normally addressed in our decisions correct okay well <laughs> you've got the longest tenure I know doesn't remember I mean I remember it all though <laughs> okay was, was there any date, Mr. Salem, on when the FEMA mine was nothing? The, the preliminaries were issued, I think, June 21. Um, so it could be one year, it could be five years or ten. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I, I, again, I've, they, they tighten up a lot of in the, uh, 
the Merrimack watershed in town. So I hope it's sooner as opposed to later because it would certainly clean up a lot of kind of historical oddities. <laughs> So at this point, do we have the in, do we have the information we need to issue a determination? Yes, for wetlands flag. I mean, it, you've gone out, you've looked at the flags, you're in agreement where the flags are. Yep. I think um, it's an issue. That's typically what we go by. If, you yeah. know, if you've and gone you and done your site visit and you're in agreement with the flags that are out there. Yep. Um, and you know, by request. And believe that the resource area has been adequately delineated, then we would. You know, make the motion to approve. Yeah, you know, I'm comfortable with that. of the resource area, wetland flags, um, WFA one or um, I mean, it would be wetlands flags uh, WFA one through WFA nine zero um, and BF one dash one through BF one dash nine. Um, but I don't know if you want to open up to public comment before that's, we get to that's a, um are there members, are there any questions or comments from members of the audience? Um, uh, just any, yeah, you have to come you up just and address Come and up and, and let us know who you are. are. What, address your questions to us. Give us your name, please. Larry Jones uh, from 58 Pleasant Street, which is the neighboring parcel here. Oh, okay. Um, so I guess my question is, is the wetland delineation is one thing, the floodplain's another, right? Mm -hmm. Either way, you can't build there. Correct. Okay. Um, the other thing I'd like to just mention to you guys so you know is there's a whole berm all along here, all the way up. You mentioned this, the big the bog. It's a huge, huge bog, right? A berm all the way to the end of the lake that's been caused by the ice pushing, pushing up and creating a berm there. An esker. An esker. <laughs> um, if anybody ever cuts through that, that's all going to drain out. And well, that, that would bog. be in the resource area. So where that green line is, yeah, no you know, he should be protected. He's north of that. You know, he's not in that resource right. area. So if that burn, that esker is there, I don't see them doing any activities in there that would, you know, in any way yeah. How change it. How does that get poli policed, right? Let's say, okay, well, they we build eight houses police. in here, <laughs> and um, you know, all is done, and away we go, and you know, we've seen the plans I mean, before. Somebody they, comes they, in and fills see, that in because they want to. the green line there. Yep. So look inside the green line. I understand. And yep. then, okay, if that, then you're taking. We have a 50 foot minimum no disturb. So if you took 50 feet out from that. Out this away, each way. away yeah, yep. to the inside. Mm -hmm. Then he's got a, an envelope in there, and then from there you can start doing things, you know. But he couldn't be closer than that. But also, what we would do is along the edge of that no disturb zone. That's where we would we would have them place permanent markers identifying resource area and no work beyond it so that there's there's no creep or anything going on and because people tend to mow a little more do a little more and work their way out and it gets bigger and bigger and we've recognized that so yeah we make them put in you know usually granite boundaries or wooden posts and it's meant for if they sell so that the people who come after them know the same rules okay. and you'll come back if they come back before us I said you'll this was the first step in a long process, so you'll be coming back yeah, yeah, as the. Yeah, I understand. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions or comments? How about from um, Noelle? Have any questions? Well, no. I have nothing either. Okay. Um, so, You're going to make a motion to we, that we approve the resource area delineation. delineation for. So. So moved. For WF flags WFA 1 through 90 and flags BF 1 1 through 1 9. Yes, thank you. So second. Moved. And she so moved. I got a second. Okay, all those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. And? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Two nine. Thank you. Thank you.
Is um is that including D's as well? I didn't hear. No. That. I didn't fully no. hear the number. No, we just didn't. Okay. Yes. Also, close the public hearing. Okay. And can I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor, Eric. Yes. Marilyn. Yes. Noel. Yes. And yes. And Margaret. Yes. So. So yeah, so you'll be in touch with Matt about the paperwork. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. you as well. Okay. So um, moving on to our 715 p.m. agenda item, which is a public hearing for. Sarah? It's on the back. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so this is a legal notice under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act, and Westford's Non Zoning Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171. The Westford Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 24th, 2022, at 7 p 7 15 p.m. in Meeting Room 201 at Town Hall, 55 Main Street to consider the request for determination of applicability application of Julio and Tunis for construction of a 13.5 foot by 19 foot patio and walkways within 100 feet of Long Salt Park Pond and bordering land subject to flooding at 19 Waterview Drive. Assessor's map 044, parcel 0040, lot 0234. Hello. Hello. Well, um, I'm Juanita Antunas and my husband, Julia Antunas. And um, we actually were residents of Westford for 39 years before retiring. Uh, mm -hmm. Recently, I was uh, active at Rodan Bush as a teacher, uh, uh -huh. assistant director and preschool director. So I may know some of you from that. And um, we've been residents at 19 Waterview since June of 2021 and really enjoy the area. We've retained a very strong connection to Westford since we retired with family and friends in the area. And now, as with many people, we're in our 70s and would love to be able to enjoy the area in front of our house a little bit more with a um, patio and walkway between the two areas. We have a lot of family and friends in the area and, and like us, they're aging and so we were concerned about having a flatter surface for people to come. Um, we, I know you have all of our information. One, one area that we would, wanted to talk about is that we do understand the concerns because it is on the pond about a, having, I guess it's um, considered permeable construction and that we are very willing to do that. We've talked to our landscaper who is Robert Nolet who has done a lot of work in the area. And we are more than willing to work um, to do that on the project. So we've already discussed that with him. And I don't know if you want to ask us questions or. I'll tell you what, I'll start. Oh. Um, so typically, from this point here, from your house, the square is your, and this is what you want to build. Yeah. From this line here to this line here, is 60 feet so typically we don't want you being any closer than 50 feet from the resource here which would be the pond yet it seems like you want to be a lot closer in your design than what we would allow and i'm trying to understand why you are coming before us with this plan which on the face of it i don't see that i could vote for because it would be wouldn't be in our compliance with our 50 foot no disturb. Now I see that at some point after the, after the subdivision was approved, after Summer Village was approved, it seems like authority was granted perhaps to you that this exclusive use went all the way to the water's edge. Now when it, when it came before the commission, 
there was a very, very minimal exclusive use area for residents, you know, just, just very close to the building. So I'm not inclined to approve this plan because it comes closer to the pond than what we would have envisioned or what we currently would allow. That's not what we were told <clears throat> when we put the plan together. Uh, Who did you talk to yeah, when you put the talked, plan together? We talked to the people at, at Westford, the board of directors, uh, the conservation group. There are other gentlemen there that were well, you t of, of Summer Village, but you didn't talk to no, us. No, no, so we were told that so was a they're not they're not the authority. You know, they don't have the authority to to say you can or can't. No, no, the authority not, resides with us. That's not what I'm saying, though. What I'm saying was we were told that there was a 30 foot restriction from the pond. Well, I, I don't. Eric, I, I feel you know I can pull up the you know I don't understand the, the, where we the setbacks. Have where, you know, this is work on a lot with an existing structure where work is proposed on an artificial surface area of the lot, where, you know, the- How is it artificial surface area of the lot? I mean, it's, it's clear- It wasn't it's, previously disturbed at the time. I mean, it's not like this is grass or anything else. This is, you know, area between trees probably that, you know, I mean, it, was it, supposed the, to the, be- the, I, I, this is consistent with the other, with um, the, uh, one that we a had request. To, ones that we had to agree to that were put in place that we had to agree to no, after the fact? No, Re at 25 Waterview, which came before the commission last fall, which again, you know, the commission made sure was, you know, no closer than 30 feet. Um, you know, again, you know. Seems, it seems to get, go against what, you know, I what I remember us agreeing to when we approved this summer village. Right. So uh, that's all you know. That's all I can say to that. Again, I wasn't. You know, I don't. You know, have, you weren't part. I, I, I was You know, I don't. I neither was Carol. I mean, that was a. Do you know how many properties are at thirty foot? Um, I know. I know when we had the. Do you problem. remember when you went out with Eric and you? Yeah. That. At that point, yes, there, and there were places where there were patios closer also. to the 30 that we made them pull back. Did you make um, them? Pull but that was that was to a wetland, not the pond. Um, no, but I don't see how the pond is any different resource. I mean, no, I know, I know the there were water view. Equal I, I know there were water view properties identified in the order the order of conditions that um, was for the unpermitted, you know, patio, you know, work within. Um, you know, that ultimately is- You had to make them pull it back? Right, that- And you made them pull it back to 30, is that what you're saying? I'm pretty sure that's what the, you know, what was discussed and, you know, in that order of conditions. Again, so it wasn't, you even know, if we allowed as involved that, at that, that would point. be 30 feet, not 60. I, I don't, yes, I, I don't remember the, the limit being 50, I think, we were, it was um, adjusted because of all the issues that occurred there. Well, no, we had to deal yeah. with that. That's that was those are two separate things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of looking back at the stuff. Um, Matt, have you gone out to this property? Yes. It is flat. It is you know a you know lawn grassed area. You know main, main, maintained more so than you know. Um, you know, it wasn't it's, meant to be maintained when we, well, it's when we did. Yes. You know, and, and granted, the the orders you know of condition were issued like ten years after. Mm -hmm. You know, they sought their certificate of compliance for that like ten years after. It was so when I look at the um, the patios that that were, uh, I guess it was 2018. We were dealing with that. Those patios were all. Um, beyond the they were at least Close. 30 feet from the edge of the pond um, but more. none of them were up none of them were as far away as 50. We're 35. Yeah um, so um, this is our problem child. Not yes you. this is our no. problem child. Whole, whole area. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I, um, I, 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 
still believe that, you know, when we, this, the 50 foot we set because we believe that being closer to that, you're going to cumulatively have impacts to the resource area. And when we let people come consistently come closer, if we do here, you know, then I'm just thinking that's, you know, it's more difficult for that resource area. So, you know, what we might have done because we might have had to have done for something in the past doesn't mean I necessarily have to agree to it here. Um, we have a compromise that we well, do a little more than 30, but not 50. What I'm, one of the things that I'm getting, with the 50 foot notice of that's, that's permanent structures like decks, houses, et cetera. Um, and in thinking and, about and that. This is, and this is a deck, this is a patio, this is a structure. Okay. Um, it's, have, it's a well, patio, it's a structure, it's not gonna go away. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to remember whether so, with. I mean, would it be, I mean, so as, oh, let me pull up the plan. As they're- There's Nothing non-permanent about it. They're, they're proposing, you know, this additional so, you know, where based off of here, it's, um, this is a better plan, you know, it, approximately 55 or 60 feet from the front of the unit to the um, edge of Long Sought Four Park. Correct. Basing off this, they're proposing to go an additional uh, 12 feet with this append, you know, this walkway to the, to this, you know, four foot, um, I'm assuming four foot square. And when I look at it though, Matt, I, when I see this, I see the 60 coming here to here, but I see the work coming all the way down to here. So that's why I'm saying it looks like we're. Right, I mean, so if it's, well, it, so I mean, if, if it's, so I mean, this I is in theory is this 13 feet plus another eight feet, we're at 21 and a half plus that's 25. So that makes, that's consistent with what's being shown on the plan. So if we, you know, if, if they were to remove this portion right How here. How far away are they then from that? Well, that, it that. would be 47 and a half or 40, yeah, 40, approximately 47.5 feet. Well, that's more and doable. Guess, that is more doable. Yeah, um, but Matt, if you can go down to the other plane, um, because this, no, yeah, the, there's one in here and it shows. But that's six, not this plan. You know, that's not what I'm seeing. Right, but it just, it's there's one which says from the edge of the pond to um, I guess back to the structure at 60 feet and then but also it's showing 30 feet that's this yeah. this one which didn't scan so if you go back to the other one it sounds like he has his patio okay and maybe if he doesn't have this extension to that extension with the pavers down here that's a lot closer to where we're trying you know that would be the compromise and then have them do the impervious or, or have them do the pervious pavers, but make sure they go in in a manner that they are pervious. So, th yeah, so that um, following ideal blocks guidelines for installing permeable. So one of the things that we looked at is, or I did, is on the ideal blocks website, um, the Yankee cobble is not right. a pervious, uh, is not a permeable paver. Yes, right. so we looked for an alternate okay. to do. Um, that's when we had heard that you were interested in, which we can understand, and we are, having yeah. been residents of Westford for we a long time. Yeah. No, we understand. We it. are we interested do. in protecting yeah. Yeah. Totally. the yeah. environment. Yeah. So we definitely want to work with you on this. So we have, there's an Andover collection that is permeable yeah. and can be installed in a pervious way. I also think that we're willing to compromise and remove yeah, the extra wall. Our primary concern is to try to get the patio. We think it will be a safer structure um, you know, um, for us. But we can compromise and eliminate the additional that which would bring them much closer to what we would like. We yeah, because I can see where, you know, the 19 by 13 which I'm going to guess is this right here, right. which brings us a lot, you know, if they're like 47 from the resource area, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But this appendage coming out, just right. okay. if they can remove that and do, you know, the permeable pavers in a way that works, I'm. I, I'm and we're willing to compromise okay. yeah. to do that. That'll work for yeah. me too. 
Yeah, because, you know, I looking at Ideal Block's website, they had some really great information about what, what you need to do to make it um, mm -hmm. permeable surface so that you'll get the, you'll get the, the drainage through, right. the groundwater gets recharged, mm -hmm. you're not having water um, going across the, the, um, the, the exactly. grass surface and stuff like that. That's right. So that's why we, and we've, I've also talked to Robert and Alette about that, about mm -hmm. adjusting yeah. the plans to include that. That would work for me. That would work for me. Okay. Noel, do you have any comments or questions? I don't have any questions. Okay, um, Matt, do you have any? No, I can, um, I can write this up. Okay, any comments or questions from the audience? Okay, um, so a uh, motion for conditional negative determination with the alterations that we yeah as, yeah. as, as yeah as, 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 discussed, as amended as this or as amended right? okay. okay yeah so have to redo the drawing Excuse you have to me? redo the drawing or? no i'll revise i'll include a okay. drawing you know, the with the determination that okay, removes mm -hmm. it. and that gives you your 19 by 13 and a half patio, patio mm -hmm. which is the important which is thing primary. Here. Concern, and it gives so. us the walkway Go ahead. Yes. and the walkway between the two entrances there's a yeah, well, yeah. that's beyond there anyway, so that's right. that's okay. Okay. We have a second. So, so, that, so who made the conditional negative? I, made, I said yes. You said yes. I'll second it. Second. All right. Okay. She can second it. All those in favor, Eric. Yes. Marilyn. Yes. Noel. Yes. And yes. And Margaret. Yes. That's unanimous. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Be you. Patience. Um, motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Okay. Noel, I miss you being here. <laughs> yes. You can teach me to the do reader. that, Ma Margaret. You can teach me to do that. You, you want to read the public notices? You. you can teach me to do that. Okay. So, and, okay, so um, moving on to our 7.20 p.m. agenda item. This is a legal notice under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act, and Westford's Non-Zoning Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171. The Westford Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 24th, 2022 at 7:20 p.m. in meeting room 201 at Town Hall 55 Main Street to consider the request for determination of applicability application of Barbara Kupfrian. That's very close. Kupfrian. Kupfrian. For construction of a 12 foot by 23 foot patio and walkways within 100 feet of Long Sought For Pond and bordering land subject to flooding at 37 Waterview Drive. Assessor's Map 044, Parcel 0040, Lot 0246. Okay. <coughs> and you I'm, are? I'm yes. Barbara Kepfrian. Um, I, I bought my cottage last September and I enjoyed it for a short time before we had to close down and move out. I met Bob Nolet at that time and started talking about this project. I restarted the project in the spring working with Bob and I decided to go with him because he does a lot of work at Summer Village and I wanted a trusted landscaper. I wanted a more stable walkway because walking on gravel is not really to my liking and I am in my 80s and it won't get any easier. <laughs> I also wanted an area for an outdoor table on a flat surface and in the design we made sure the patio was well over 30 feet from the water. Well actually it is 46. 46, 46 or 48 some yeah 46. And actually today it's probably 52 because the water <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's down yeah. For the so water. True. when i measured it so it was true. yeah so working with bob we thought it best to keep the walkway on the deck side away from the building allowing drainage from the gravel into the gravel from the roof line and we're doing the same thing with the patio leaving 31 inches of gravel next to the building and I plan to leave it as gravel and just put clay pots on there as I did this summer with some flowers. Um, we plan to make sure the material used between the pavers is permeable and allows good drainage. 
Um, I don't think permeable. So you don't have permeable pavers, so you're going to leave space to let stuff drain in between I the pavers? Think, well, I'll have to talk about that because yeah. I thought that we could use the regular pavers and just have it far enough apart that that you put the material in there. not to work that, that well. Well, well. And then we've seen people out there seal it after the fact. Now, well, you're would, looking at the Yankee cobble? I was, yes. yes. And um, because <laughs> looking at their... Eric, looking at, um, they have a brochure about creating permeable, okay. and it talks about putting the, the pavers there and, and leaving the space and then the, the, the different types of crochet stone and stuff you put underneath it so that the water can just... Um, Is that how it will be installed? Well, I don't know. Yeah. I, I would like you know, to, I mean, whatever I want your guidance If it's a on condition that. of approval, then, you know, with me to confirm, you know, during construction, I mean, like if that's... If it worked, that that, I mean... If they built it so it would function like that and be permeable, that's fine. But, you know, I would want to make sure it was built that way because if not, then it wouldn't be permeable. I mean, we well, can put it. Well, and if it's too far apart, I would trip on it. So. Well, yeah. Well, no, right. I mean, it's there still well, is, you know, a sand. A drain. Yeah. There's right. sand filling between them, so it's not a, you know, it's not, um, you know. A, as long as it's not, not running off and it's, and it's. Infiltrating. It's yeah. infiltrating. Yep. I mean, would the commission That's want the to, you know, have me go out during construction to confirm? Yeah, to make sure that the it's being constructed so it functions as intended. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's a great idea. There's not very much of a slope to the land. No, so you're just into, you're, you know, we just approved like 46 or 45, so you're at 46, you're good. That's okay. the issue. I'm okay. sorry Bob couldn't be here tonight to answer questions. That's had, okay. No, he that's meetings. Matt will double check. Well, and, yep. and, and I think having him talking with Matt is probably, right. you know, it's it's the discussion well, we'll, on site. We'll work together. I'm yep. very much into native plants and I, mm -hmm. I'm a gardener, so I, I care about the environment. And I've been doing this 28 and a half years for Lester. Yeah. Place. It's important to me as well. Yeah, well, so it sounds it fun. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any comments? Or, well, so commission members, any more comments or questions? I have no issue with this. Okay. Are you good with this, Noel? Well, I had a question. Um, so this is um, being constructed for this project, but in perpetuity in the future, is there going to be anything in the deed or anywhere that says that this isn't a mistake? There was actually a gap between these things, and there's a reason for this. Oh, you mean? And you just want to make sure that it always functions as or it's a, in, in a permeable way and not have it be impervious. I don't know. If, right. I, I don't in know the future, I, I don't want someone don't to come in how. and say, "Oh, well, obviously there's there a gap any, here." And, you, know, these, you know. No, it's a negative determination of applicability. So. Well, maybe there could be a side note at, that you took a visit and this is the understanding. Yeah, and that I mean, it's, you know, it's approving, file. you know, a landscape, you know, it's, it, you know, yeah, akin to if you're going out there, maybe they it is or you can read it. And that's the most you can yeah. basically do at the time. Or you and, can yeah. read it into the minutes at a future meeting or something that you well, went and, there and report on it. No, well, because there is no order of conditions. We don't have the ability to, to state something about being in perpetuity. But he could, but he yeah. could report on, but no, well, he could report on a visit in yeah. collaboration and what the under and what the under and what the specification and what the understanding is and that w what our understanding was so going forward that would always be a permanent record yeah um, would, i would work yeah, with bob good. and no, Matt. that would work for us sure we're just looking how to how to okay. you know yeah. going um, forward for yeah, other people would. yeah Does that um, work no well okay are there any questions or comments from the audience I have to ask. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Emotion. Matt, any anything else? Nope. I can okay. write this up as discussed. Okay. So, can I have a motion to issue a conditional negative determination? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Eric. Yes. Marilyn. Yes. Noel. Yes. Anne. Yes. And Margaret. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're very welcome. I'll invite you all over later. <laughs> so Matt will be in touch about the paperwork. Okay. So. What? We have to close the. Uh, oh yes, motion to. Thank you yeah. for your time. You're very Thank welcome. Thank you.
Motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Okay. And okay. <clears throat> Moving on to our 7:25 p.m. agenda item, it's um, a continuation of the public hearing for NAB Realty Trust Seven Island Path. We need to get in back. Uh, Noel back. Yes, Noel's back. Okay. Thank so, <laughs> is the continuation? Yeah, the continue. So. The applicant has requested a continuation without discussion to the September 14th, 2022 meeting. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. <clears throat> Moving on to our other 725 p.m. agenda item. <clears throat> this is a continuation of the public hearing and issue order of conditions for Troiano, 55 Graniteville Road. Yeah, so here for the applicant? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I no did finished. speak with Jeff and uh, the property owner this week. This week, um, and they didn't have any um, concerns with the order of conditions. Order. I know Margaret, you know, provided a comment. So um, let's see. Ah. So my comments after reviewing the material in the package was that in the discussion between the enforcement order and this, this um, NOI public hearing, there was talk about um, delineating the 30 foot no disturb zone on the subject property. I didn't see that mention. I didn't see those markers indicated on the um, the proposed plan no and so in I think you know based on my understanding was that the restoration plan was going to you know as that the enforcement order required was going to show the locations of the granite bounds the locations of the conservation posts at that 30 foot um, I mean we can certainly make a um, you know, add a special condition, you know, uh, uh, prior to the approval of a building permit, um, you know, the rest or a plan showing a uh, revised a plan idea. showing the conservation posts. That's a good idea. On, that wouldn't hold anything up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and, and my concern is, is so often with a filing like this, we go and we look at the, the, the site plan and what's not on there. If something's not on there, we... You know, we wouldn't normally think about, oh, there's this other activity going on in parallel. And and so, yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, I've, I, in uh, the um, property owner has reached out. He is, you know, actively, you know, looking for plantings and um, mm -hmm. in how to renaturalize. He actually um, wanted to put in two foot reveal granite posts at the two of the locations as opposed to six inch reveal, which Yes, is a deviation from the enforcement order, but a deviation In a good for the way. for the better. Yeah. Um, and so I, you know, certainly was uh, favorable. Well, he wants to go six to two or two to six. Six to two. That's well. Good. How is that better for us if it's like that far off the ground? No, 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 no two feet. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> two feet. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Much yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so right, I mean, I think uh, uh, he is planning to comply with the enforcement order by okay. the December first deadline. Um, so. And you know the order, the plans for the garage construction are still you know being worked on, and um, so I think that's a probably most likely a next year project. But I can certainly amend the order. So you want to approve these with that amendment? Yeah, with okay. so you know a revised plan condition. showing the conservation posts yeah. um, prior to the issuance of a building permit. I, I think just. You know, going off in the future, when somebody comes back and looks at the file, it's just so much cleaner if the plan that's Absolutely. approved for this project Absolutely. has all the information on yeah. it. So we're not kind of needing to look at multiple plans to figure out, okay, what the heck was supposed well, to happen. Was if, there's a way, if there's a way 
that you know things can be confused they will so the the clearer we can be and like you say dot the i's and cross the t's and make sure that's, good. that's what we need to do plus it mm -hmm. gives a point of reference so there's no dispute about it yeah um the other thing that that kind of hit me was when i read the conditions condition 39 which talks about landscape waste it's not supposed to be put in the buffer zone and we make that a condition in perpetuity and what i realized was that condition 30 which says that the landscaping within 100 feet of the bvw should not require ongoing fertilizer or pesticides i was wondering if condition 30 should also be something we do in perpetuity just so that it's consistent with what we do with the yard waste as well. And on top of that, I would love to see Condition 30 also have herbicides add to it. So it's herbicides, per pesticides, and fertilizers. So that it's a negative. What do you, what do you so mean? You just want to so amend, thir amend 30 to be in perpetuity and include herbicides. Yes. Now, well, was that just it, just the herbicides? Yes, because there's yeah, always fertilized pesticides and herbicides? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good with that. Yep, okay. Too. Um, so, Matt, did you have anything else? Um, are there comments or questions on this project for members of the audience? Okay, so um, can I have a motion to issue the order? Do we issue or approve the order? Approve. Issue. Issue, issue the order, the order of conditions okay. is amended. As amended. For um, 55 Graniteville Road. 55 Graniteville Road, DEP file number 334-1807. So, so move. I just okay. did. Okay, forget it. <laughs> Um, all those in favor, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Okay. Can I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Okay. Um, here you go, Ann. I don't see Chris here. Um, yeah, I'm just, where Jim hadn't, where Jim thought he might not be able to attend this meeting, he'd also um, sent me his um, comments. his comments. comments. So I'm just I'm just checking that. Okay, so moving on to our 7.30 p.m. agenda item, which is a continuation of a public hearing for Franklin at 31 Bridge Street. I had not heard from him. I did not see so him. we're going to have to continue this. Okay. 14. To what date? So we... Uh, September 14th. Okay, so can I have a motion to continue the public hearing till September 14th? So moved. Second. All those in favor, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. Ann? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Okay, moving on to our 7.35 p.m. agenda item, which is the enforcement order for 25 Buckboard Drive um, to review and approve the restoration plan. Good evening, Matt Waterman with Land Tech Consultants here on behalf of Rose Hinkle. She couldn't make it here tonight. Um, I think she was either out of town or had a conflict, um, but I know she was not available. Um, we're here for 25 Buckboard Drive, which this actually started, I think, back in February uh, 10th, where the commission issued an enforcement order um, for some work associated with her pool in the backyard. Um, it was flagged, I think, by the building department, and then it kind of got into the commission's hands where there was a 
work that it was beyond what the original scope was and what was signed off for the building permit we came in in late april on the 27th i met with the commission kind of established what the goals were to to move forward uh rose was having a hard time getting hold of contractors back then um on the eve of summer and um so and since then uh while we're here tonight um she has been working with contractors she has contractors lined up um, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but I believe she's having the shed removed. Um, but we have since submitted a restoration plan that we're hoping that the commission um, could sign off for. She's got a couple of strict dates coming up um, for the removal of the barn and then contractors to come in and start removing the earthwork um, that had extended on to the, to the open space parcel. Um, the plan that I show and it's up on the screen um, shows removing all the fill that's extended out into the open space. Um, it gets pulled back onto the property of number 25 buckboard, um, regraded, um, the fence relocated. Uh, the shed is being removed. It's being donated to, a, a, I believe, a shelter for animals. Um, and then, obviously, we would be removing and restoring the, 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 uh, the work that occurred in the open space parcel. Um, be happy to answer any questions. Um, hoping that tonight we could give Rose the approval to, to keep working, to keep moving forward. Um, I think the shed is being removed this week and shortly thereafter. Yeah, so the shed is scheduled to be removed on the 26th. We're scheduled to be out there on the 29th, and then they're going to start work next week. Be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Noel, do you have any comments or questions? I no, thank you. Okay. Matt. I just had one um, where the proposed um, renaturalization is to occur off the uh, property of 25 Buckboard. I think the construction plans have it be. Um, spreading leaf litter, natural leaf litter sticks and felled logs within the restoration area. Um, I would just like to see a seed mix of some native seed mix um, be applied so that we're giving it a jump start uh, over the inva over invasives, um, getting a foothold. Um, but no, everything looks good beyond that. Don't have any issues with that. Um, I think that would be, I think this was, plan was prepared some time ago and I, I, and I know we've since submitted a different restoration plan that does include a seed mix, so it would be consistent with that. It's, it's fine. The, I think it's the, either the meadow mix from the wetland, the, that group out of Amherst, but whatever it is that for like a shaded area, um, we'd be happy to apply it, whatever the, the recommended. So, um, so we did, oh. Approve the uh, yeah. restoration plan. Do you have any further comments? No. Are there any comments from members of the audience? Okay. So can I have a motion to approve? The, the restoration, actually it's as amended because we want to use the seed mix. Yeah, so approve the restoration plan as amended. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. And? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. We'll be in touch and we'll hopefully be morphing this into a request for certificate of compliance. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we don't schedule any time or date at this point, right? I don't think. I don't think you filed an NOI. Oh, right. True. We'd be. But we'll, 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 I'll talk with you. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be wrapping up the enforcement order. There you go. Okay. Anything, something to sign? <laughs> no, no, we we're just approving no. the Okay. So thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. So moving on to our 740 p.m. agenda item. We have a continuation of a public hearing um, roots and shoots. on behalf of Roots and Shoots LLC, 45 Village View Road, DEP file number 334-1804. Um, I have the front one. I 
IT's, IT's jumpy about thumb drives. <laughs> um, good I evening. the ones you sent on Monday. Yeah, let's uh, start with that. So um, <clears throat> I don't have a new plan for you as yet. I have done quite a bit of research um, between when we met last and now. Um, I sat Matt some, um, some photos from the site. Um, I have with me aerial photos, which I could address. Um, do you have, uh, you don't have access to Google Earth on that, do you? Uh, I can have access to something. Google Earth would not, not, you know, the Google Earth with the calendar that goes back. Yeah, there's the photos. All right, well, let's start with the photo then. So if you look at, um, can we zoom in on uh, that by chance? So if you see the, um, the stone wall that is holding up the adjacent driveway on the adjacent property just past that, um, I believe that we're going to have a photo come up in just a moment. That laser pointer there works. Oh, awesome. Which, orange, uh, yep. orange in the middle. Yep. So this stone wall right here um, is an image that we'll see in, uh, again in just a moment on one of the other photos where... And there's another photo that's going to come up where there was um, ledge outcroppings and uh, a steep rock across the back here. All that lines up. Oops. All that lines up with the um, <coughs> the topography on the town GEIS with the aerial photos um, back in 2005. You can see the rock wall that's right here, buried right now. Um, this wall is set, as you'll see in a minute, right at the base of that existing ledge outcroppings and, excuse me, and rock boulders that were there. Um, over the course of time, there has been uh, some vegetation that grew up in and around those rocks, so it made the backyard, when you look at the more recent aerial photos, look a little smaller. Um, one of the things that the commission asked at the last time was, you know, dates and things that occurred and when did things happen and how much earth was brought in. Um, the, uh, the start of this project was in uh, early April, April 4th of this year, uh, with the wall completed uh, essentially a week and a half later. They brought in 50 yards of clean screen fill. If you take just the straight area across here, of and not where the wall jags towards us and come back towards the, the, the site a little bit, a 20 by 80 foot area is 1,600 square feet. At 50 yards, 50 by 27 is 1,350. And you divide the, the latter, the square feet by the cubic, uh, the cubic feet by the square, cubic feet by the square feet and you get 0.84 feet on an average of earth that was brought in. Obviously, right up next to the deck, there was li limited amount and, and more so, so maybe a couple feet in the back that was brought in. You can go forward, Matt, and photos a little bit. It's just the same, kind of the same. Keep going. I'm hoping that I have a better one in here. Yeah, I don't think that I have the photo I'm after in here. Uh, no, 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 it didn't make it. Um, I apologize, it's been a very crazy, busy time frame. Um, if you look at the, the yard, keep going backwards. If you, if you look at those yard photos and the photo that I, photos I have on this thumb drive here, the, the outcropping of rock is literally right in front of this. They literally dug right down next to that outcropping of rock, put in their footing, and then built this this wall to come forward you, a you couldn't build it on top of the rock because it's jungly rocks not an even surface and nothing you could tack to and they're very large boulders and, and outcroppings that were existing there to come in front of it would have been obviously a possibility if they could have gotten depth for a footing and I, I don't have the answer for that I don't know um, if they could or they couldn't um, but with the aerial footage and looking at all the aerial photos um, and looking at our site plan even, 
that wetland line continues right straight up the back and you can see um, the yard and, and that wall are, are right close as well. Um, the applicant really didn't think that they were doing anything. They were closer to their building than the wall and the disturbance next door. Um, and they were right at the edge of that wall and I can provide you with those other photos. My reason and my hope to have those other photos for you this evening was to, to talk with the commission and, and see what, if there was any um, leeway. I totally understand this is the worst way to do any kind of permitting to come in and, and ask for something after something was done. Um, and that's, you know, on the property owner and the contractor totally. Um, you know, as I said before, we kind of brought in after the fact on this. Um, but it, when I looked at all the, the evidence, I got photos from both the contractor and the homeowner, and the homeowner's ones were the ones I was trying to put on the disc here, or the thumb drive. Um, they, they showed that this area, there, there, was, there wasn't much space to come forward on it. Um, and they are right up against that. And before I went forward to try to tear down the wall and have them tear down the wall, it is something I wanted to just come back the, in and talk about. The to folks you. who came in just the other week who bought the home and then raised the issue that it was a steep slope and they want, they filled it in. It's just that. This is the yeah. one where, um, yes, it was two meetings ago. So the last meeting in July was when we had was when yeah. we you I were that was correct. first yes it was that meeting it was the wall was constructed i think it's 18 feet from the well that's, the, that's a question mark as well because we only did a um a, a topographic survey and we didn't do a boundary survey as yet i've got a i've got to take it to the next level of survey to tie in the the property line it's very interesting do you have my site plan there i can pull it up I have a paper one here, if not. Uh, when you look at the, there we go. Ooh, that's pretty light. There we go. So if, can you, yeah. So if, if you run that cursor on the right-hand side, Matt, where that boulder wall is. Yep. So that boulder wall, by this plan, is on our property as is uh, my client's property as is the driveway for the property next door which is right at the top of that boulder wall um, <clears throat> and if you look on the left hand side of our proposed wall and if you can run your cursor right right there you oh, can the, see the, the boulders oh yeah I got it right there I forgot I got this guy I'm used to the driving a mouse on zoom <laughs> uh, right there you can see that is the extension of the boulders that this wall sits right behind. Wow, look at that. I got to not have a steady hand tonight. Um, better when I'm not leaning on the table. <clears throat> so that, that, that's right there. It shows on the plan of the boulders and the ledge that comes out, and that thing is sitting literally right in front of it. And then this wall comes down and bend, and that's that bend that I was, we were looking at in the photos. I really think that the reclamation or the restoration of the buffer from the lawn that was there to this makes for a better control of site runoff with this stone uh, stone diaphragm at the end of the driveway, um, this drainage picking up and allowing this water to infiltrate into the ground rather than a, a sheet flow over the, the boulders that were there and or um, this wall, um, and then having a, a, an overflow discharge into a recharge uh, structure. I think we're coming up with, with a better scenario. The level surface by leveling off the slope, uh, probably a couple feet at the back and, and uh, inches up closer to the house, is you know slowing down runoff towards the wetlands rather than the the fast runoff off the lawn that you would have had previously i think it's a better scenario i totally agree a hundred percent they're in the wrong is this, for everything is this the done. one with the asian gentleman who came in yes. and, and, and his wife couldn't be here and he had the kids and he bought the house 
and then they decided after the fact that they thought it was too steep for the children. Right, that's, they wanted that's it, yeah, the, yes. And this, no, this is we, that we wanted site. them to remove it. I still so, want them to remove it. So they so, did this after the fact. I, you know, this, this is not correct. Well, and I think one of the things is we have we have set a precedent. We have said nothing closer than thirty feet, and that we have made people pull patios. We have made people who went off and did something without the necessary review and approval, we've said, no, we do not allow anything closer, anything like this, um, closer than 30 feet. And we make an exception for one person and everybody else thinks that they're entitled to that same thing. And that's why we stick with, it's gotta be a minimum of 30 feet from the wetlands. And, and the fact that- And that's usually with a sauna tube. Yeah. I mean, not just that we let somebody come up and, and do whatever to the 30. It's like, you know, extremely minor activity. This was huge. Here, here they built a concrete wall, a block wall, and filled it in. Without getting this. And the her knew when they bought it, would, you know, it's, they didn't have to buy this house. But also, the wall was built without going to the building department to get the necessary permitting or reviews. Well, this, is, this is a major project that skipped all of the steps where these questions would be raised and we could talk through it. I, I to and, and we would have not have allowed it. And we would have pointed out, hey, you know, you made the, the conscious choice to purchase this. Your wife was there. I'm sure that, you know, you had to have been thinking about the kids at the time. You don't purchase it and then say after the fact, oh, geez, now I'm concerned. If they had concern, they had it all along. Or if you, if you, <clears throat> If you have concerns and you want to do something, you still have to follow the process working with your contractor to do all of the permitting process to, you know, to get yourself to a better situation. Or, or to come before us for us to say, unfortunately, in your particular instance, not much we can do for you. Or, and some people would have done much, it before. There wasn't they, relief that well, we could provide. But some people would have done it before they bought the house. They, if you know it's going to be a huge expense, you come and burn it before so you. Or, so you or just say, even, what or is it? Even you know, I'm just thinking out loud. Not, you know, I, I, yeah. I mean, if but I saw no, that, I'd know, be horrified, just, and my three kids and I would not be there. But but no, we we do not permit this level of work it's this painful close to the wetlands. Is. I no. agree. I agree. And this is painful. Yes. We don't do it lightly. So I mean, I'm in agreement with before. Pull it out. Well, and it's store just, it, and, that, and, and this is leaving it in its current state, well, in, in just, my opinion, uh -huh. is, 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 is not suitable and, and is, is not preferable to putting it back to its original condition. Well, I think, and I'll maybe take a different tack, is the third, you know, we have, we have limits of disturbance. Mm -hmm. And we would want to see a plan or proposed plan that is complies with our and setbacks. And, and we have it. a conversation that says, how do we get to there? You know, is is um, you know, this is this is not something we would approve. We wouldn't approve this at the 30 like this. Mm -hmm. This is too much activity at the 30. So I really, you know, when I look at this and I say, okay, you know, what kind of relief could you provide from before they did it? Probably not a heck of a lot because it wouldn't have allowed that kind of filling to go that close to the resource area within, you know, within, within 30 or even at the 30. We would, well, there, you know. There was now this is beyond 30, but yes. I, yeah. I, I totally understand what you're saying. And I, I just wanted to have the even conversation, yeah. no, given, the, given yeah. the photos. But I was just a little yeah. confused at, you know, yeah. what particular yeah. project and, and we even though you point, here. even though you point out that some things are better than it would have been, you know, with what is there now, it still doesn't matter, you know, unfortunately. Well, and, you know, with, with the discharge that's being, you know, there are a lot of problems that we had with the work that was done without the necessary review and approval, and it just, we've got to get back to something, we've got to get back to something that we can approve at the starting point yeah okay okay all right sorry so no problem. um continue this so, so we'll need to continue so i can get a plan to pull it back and uh bring it back to a previous condition and i appreciate your time this evening and your chance to uh let me have 
some discussion on your time. Sep so, yeah. September 28th. That's a month. Maybe a little more Does time. that work for you? Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Cool. Um, so before I make, before we do that, um, are there any comments or questions from members of the audience? Okay. So can I have a motion to continue the public hearing to September 28th? So moved. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Okay. Um, now moving on to our seven. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. Good night. Um, our 7:40 p.m. agenda item. It's a continuation of a public hearing and issue order of conditions for Silverman 10 Drawbridge Road, DEP file number 334-1806. So Matt, was there anything we were waiting for? Okay. Um, so people have had a chance to review the order of conditions in the packet. Yep. Um, any comments, questions? I'm good. Okay. I'm good too. Nothing else? Um, any comments or questions? No. Okay. So can I have a motion to Issue the order of conditions for Silverman 10 Drawbridge Road, DEP file number 334-1806. All, all those in favor, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. Ann? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Okay, um, motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Um, so then um, also the 7.40 p.m. agenda item, which is discussion issue or enforcement order for Williams 17 Hopkins Place. Uh, we've in consultation with the property owner and with uh, their representative for Meisner Brem being away all last week, we just thought it would be best to continue this to September 14th and have a fruitful discussion with the commission. Okay. Motion to continue to September 14th. Moved. Second. All those in favor, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. And yes, and Margaret, yes. Okay, so that's the agenda items. Um, moving on to our discussion and action items. Beth, if you want to come up briefly, explain your request, introduce yourself for the record. And Hi, my name is Matt Kutfila. Um, I was hired for the summer. I'm a UMass student, UMass Lowell uh, Civil Engineering, hired by Archstone Builders. Um, we're in the process of building a 28 subdivision um, off of St. Augustine and the temporary emergency access road St. James uh, requires two retaining walls. Um, wall one is 342 feet uh, with a max exposure of eight feet. Uh, it goes from four and a half to eight and then tapers off again to four and a half. Um, Wall two is uh, 160 feet with a max exposure of 18 feet, starting at one and a half feet, rising up to the 18 and then tapering down to three. Um, it is, um, there's a fence and a guardrail between the you wall. Use the laser pointer so when you're talking about the walls, I know which ones you're talking yeah, about. Sure. Um, Orange well, in the middle. Yeah, I see, I'm oh, just yeah. trying to. Yeah, he's trying to figure oh, out where the wall one. No. Wall one is in this journal. Yeah, that tiny paper. little thing there. So wall one. Yep. Yeah. And wall two is here. And explain wall one again. It starts at four feet. You said start at four feet. Yep. And where rise. Does it start at four from from Groton or Dunstable coming up St. James Way or. Um, yeah. It. 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 it I mean, it depend. You know, either or, depending on what you look at it. Um, it's it's 
well, when you were talking about it, was it seemed like it was going to get higher in the middle or yep. or right? Just trying to understand it and right. So the max the 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 maximum height of the wall is is here in the middle, and it's so. Uh, so I have the emergency access road, same James Way. Mm -hmm. Is it coming flush with the block, and then it, does it drop off on the other side? I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm seeing a block wall, mm -hmm. but there's a reason for the block wall to be there. Right. Is it because the road is elevated and they need to, to buttress that road against that block, and yes. then does it drop off the back side, and yes, that's correct. what it is? Correct. That's the, that's the uh, so there's a slope down here to the wetland, and on, on this wall as well, the road is, is higher in elevation, and so the retaining wall is too, uh, that, that the slope would be too steep here. I, I just know that like, okay, right now, when I drive down Dunstable Road, mm -hmm. and I, I look at St. James Way, it's a dirt road right now. Correct. But you're saying they need to still bring in additional fill to, to elevate that road even more from what it is, and that's the, why this is, or is that at the elevation it's gonna be, and then that block wall is, is being built on the backside? They have the, the I'm not 100% sure where the current status, I, I believe that the, the road, St. James, has already been subgraded. The fill has been brought in from, um, yeah, it looks it, to me it looks like it's almost finished. Right. And, and, and originally, the grade doesn't it need to change. It looks like you know you could fairly drop. You know, and I see this. I see it drop off, and right. then I see more clearing. And it seems like, you know, one retaining wall needs to be there. But I almost was asking myself, why does it? Because you know the road is elevated, but then it kind of grades out, and you know so. Maybe I didn't understand the need for the wall, but you know, this is supposed to be an emergency access road that never gets used. <laughs> Correct. This is, when I look at the amount of destruction and removal of vegetation that has occurred and, and the engineering required for an emergency access road that's never supposed to be used, to me, and I told you this, Matt, when we were out there, it just seems like so much overkill for something that's just not supposed to be used. I mean, you could probably drive two sets of vehicles on either side of that. You know, it's not a one way. It's actually, it seems like it's a two way road. Again, this was, you know. I know, I'm the, just the, saying. Again, I, this is, this plan, uh, uh, looking back in the file, looking at the original, the original proposal and design of this emergency access was within the 50 foot, um, you know, was I, I think was probably closer to 30 feet from the wetland resource area. So, you know, in order for them to, you know, get the maintain the grades and maintain, you know, the slope that is you know was required, you know, in the planning board approvals, um, you know, the, the the retaining walls are. I being guess when I just look out there right now, I I I'm, I question the necessity of the wall because it doesn't look like the slopes I don't think, coming off that wall, and that's why I asked. I think about the slopes the grade. are. I think the slopes are too great as currently the slopes from the. Um, Maybe from the, the mid section of it, but you know from from the ends. I mean, you're talking about raise, you know, putting in a block wall here in the middle of this thing that's over eight feet high. Right, and that's just around the wetland resource. I'm, I'm assuming that's right in this area right here. This no, no, it's around the part. Or around this one here. Yeah, okay. that's that's the one that's. Um, so what's the height of, of this rock of of this that retaining one wall? Is, um, uh, maxes out at eight. See, it does max out at eight. So the so the other one maxes out at what? Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay, 18. so it's eighteen going around. So I mean, they're going up higher than this from the floor to the ceiling with block wall around this, and they're going up eight feet in the middle of this, starting at four and four. What's the name? That well, just it, blows my mind. So is it? Yeah. Is it? Is it? But and what I was trying to visualize is you've got the road. 
Is it the wall comes up from the road or the wall goes down from the road? Well, see, that's what I mean. The, down it's, the it's down so, from the road. Yeah. Okay. On both sides. Okay. On both sides. So it's it. So. Well, when you drive by it now, I I just don't. To me, it looks like the road is that great, and I don't see why we have an 18-foot block wall over on one side and one coming up to eight in the middle on the other side. I just, it seems like it could be graded out. So on, on the, the wall closest to the wetland on parcel E, um, where is the area of greatest height of that wall? Right here. Right there, okay, and, and how, how steeply does it taper down from the, I mean, is it a gradual? So what are the ends? Is it 18 to 4? Yeah, is that Matthew. what you're asking? Or whatever that is. Yeah. That's this one here. Yeah, so here's, it does show, yeah, it goes in. So it does show the proposed uh, grade of the bottom. Uh, and what does it say? I mean, it's, it's, it's not too... It's hard to under you know, when I looked at that it was hard for me to visualize the base elevation the, the the base elevation is at um, 261.5 that's the that base mean? okay so so it okay so in this center section that's where it gets closest to being um, 18 feet tall. So when I look at the like line, it looks like it cuts the up the top of the blocks. That's on the back side of the road. This 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 dashed line here is the is, road. Is the you're right? Is the grade on the road on, of the road? Like right. the and then this is on the back side of that. Yeah. Between so is, between the road and the wetland. Yes. So when you're in the wetland, this is what you look at. It's like the tunnels going to the airport. <laughs> and I'm just but when I look at that and I look what's I, it seems like there's enough, I mean, they've cleared so much that it could actually be graded. And I just, I, I, for me, it's hard to visualize seeing the need for this when, when I drive by that every day. And it just, you mean, it's at grade right now. And, th you know, I'm not sure if you, it's, I, I don't know. I haven't been, when I was out over two weeks, probably about two weeks ago, and spoke with, the uh, one of the operators of uh, the bulldozer, he was mentioning two weeks ago that he still had to get up eight feet to get to the grade of. See, so that's why I was wondering so I don't if think, they're at grade. I, I, I'm, not not at grade sure, I'm not hundred percent sure that it's at grade now. Grade, I think, yeah. I, that's what I was asking. I think, yeah. I think there's right. still more being brought in because they need to use the wall to get that to start but, getting that height because you're going to. I mean, if you have, look at that grade that they have right now without getting up that high you would think that's easily accessible to get to the top. I mean, I look at other places in town where, where subdivisions have been accepted and, and the grades are steeper than the current grade of that road. I think it and might have to do with being an emergency access and getting... A, oh, I get that. But I mean, if I'm on a major road, a subdivision road, <clears throat> It has to be of equal, grade or better than an emergency access road because I still have fire and police and everything going up a subdivision road where this is just supposed to be an emergency access when you can't go up the other road. So, you know, that's my issue here. You know, I take a look at that grade. I mean, take a look at the grade as it is, you know, and, and you can follow it all, the, you know, from Dunstable mm -hmm. and, and, and follow it all the way up. I, it, hard for me to visualize that road needing to be elevated even more to get more of a smooth grade or for somebody to say that the grade right now is too steep to accommodate emergency access vehicles. I mean, let's put it this way. Drive down Dunstable, and there are grades steeper on Dunstable as, as you go down to Summer Village. Right, but go, I mean, that doesn't mean that, you know, if- I mean, an emergency I mean, access vehicle can drive up and down Dunstable I, I, Road. They should be able to drive up what they got right now on St. James. Eric, this was a condition of approval I'm just in saying, the order of I, conditions, I, you know, where the wall where, design- where we, had, where we had to accept it or they were gonna come in with a conventional, but you know, I still am gonna say why when I see something and I'm gonna question it. 
Okay. And, I, and I look around town and I say, I have steeper grades on roads all over town, yet for some reason, this has to be done and built the way it is to the extent that it is for something that's supposed to never be used. And, and, and to me, that just doesn't make sense. And I'm sorry, you know, when I, we'll I call it out when it doesn't make sense. Okay. Matt, is this is this something that we could meet with the uh, the chief of the fire department to do? A I mean, this has been approved process? by the planning board. You know, yeah, it's been in, the engineering department has reviewed the the you know has it's reviewed not go the, the, the 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 approved sub the subdivision has been approved. You know, after probably. 10 year, nine yeah, years, nine years of- Yeah, we kept on in, going back and forth and back and, and forth so, on this I mean, Noel. There is an approved plan. There is, you know, this is in the approved plan, you know, there was a retaining wall shown, you know, with a plan to be, you know, a, a specifically- yeah, a Did anybody realize that it was gonna be an 18 foot high retaining wall? I don't. Was that ever articulated to us? I don't believe so. Uh, you know, do we have that type of retaining wall anywhere else in town that like that? Maybe we could ask. Point one out to me, where we have an I mean, I mean, retaining Okay, so wall. I mean, we can we can keep going back and forth. Well, do you want well, me to do, do you hey. want to do you want to continue this to the next meeting and have you know the someone, maybe someone from the planning to, board can explain to. it? Why can't someone from the planning board explain it? Because just because well, just because people say oh you know some people don't really visualize or realize what it is on, on, on a 2D flat map like this, or yeah, we might need a retaining wall, but it, you know, it doesn't come till after the fact that it's like, oh yeah, it's gonna be like 18 feet high. Noel, did you have a question? Um, well, maybe like the planning board, the chief of the fire, the, the fire chief and us. the conservation commission could coordinate to come to a compromise of what can be done it's and, a done deal. I, mean, I, I, I know, I know that it's potentially not going to be used, but it may. I mean, we've had we've had fires in town that were unexpected recently. So um, I don't, I don't think that we should rule out that something may not happen in this fire road. But I do want to make sure that it's. Uh, I mean, it should be reasonable. Can I make a suggestion? Okay, Marilyn, you. I mean, obviously, this has been improved in other places. So, what I would like to do is understand why. So, that a letter from me would be fine from the planning board to explain why this extreme. That would be it. So, we're not going to get to change this. So, Eric, the, the, if I'm understanding some of what you're saying, it's when we talked about this emergency access road. At that point in the design process, they said, and we'll need retaining walls. But no, they when this came to us, we were like, take, it was take it or leave it. Okay. So we really didn't have much of a choice to talk about this and change this. This was like, either you have to accept it or we're coming in with a conventional. And I'm saying, I don't think we th had a chance to vet this because we weren't provided the opportunity. Okay, and when with what was presented to us, was did it include the dimensions we're now seeing on these walls? I don't know. They might have been there. I don't think the height was discussed. Okay, so so some of this is also so, so, so your concern with so your concern is with the height with relation to a specific interest of the wetlands protection. Yes, area. because I th I think that I think that if the road. So this pitch is probably not, I think the goal is to keep the pitch down as much as possible for ease of driving. But what I'm saying, if there was a slightly steeper pitch here, the way it is now, we could grade it off, not have the wall and, and still protect the resource area. What's your, what, what interest of the act is this, is this it, wall going to have in relation? We're bringing in more fill, more grade. I don't know. Even snow removal, we're going to be pushing that stuff off the side. You know, if they have to do something, you know, I'm just 
raising the issue that maybe it doesn't need to be constructed the way it is and maybe it could more gently slope off to the resource areas the way I see it as we drive by you know but somebody else said yes so I want to know why okay so yeah I can so get I will ask I will I, what made you, you do what we feel is extreme right you know okay. what what if motivated that's, if that's, you if that's the commission and, and, and I that's say that in context desire. in that I don't feel that we had we didn't a have choice a, and a say as what would be best here Right, but in the specific, I agree. The, I agree with Marilyn. I think it, we need more in the in the order of conditions that was approved by the commission, so oh, issued by the commission, the specific special condition, you know, number fifty four, any wall within the buffer zone greater than four feet in height must be designed and stamped by a structural engineer prior to construction. Right, all and wall that's designs, standard. all wall that's designs, standard. right, exactly. So, the approved plan, but nobody came a retaining in. Nobody wall. came in and said they were building an eighteen foot wall. But, but what interest of the act is being is is I'm derogating? There are better for, ways to do it, and and that, still that, that's not enough. No, it that's is not actually. The I need an interest of the act that is being derogated from. That you know this wall is not sufficient to protect, and I don't hear it, Eric. I don't. I understand your concern oh. about snow, but that's the planning board. That's the planning board's concern. You know, where, where's snow going? Where's runoff going? You know, well, bringing so over the, the side, board. then it all builds up on the backside, and I don't think that's very good. Ask it, the planning board, and then we can talk about it again. Right now, we're beating a dead horse. I don't disagree with what you're saying. I'm just saying we're beating a dead horse. Whatever the commission's pleasure. Someone's going to respond. I, I'd, I'd love to just get a better explanation of why this is necessary. Let's get it okay. from the planning board or whoever else signed mm -hmm. off on it. Then we'll understand their thinking. Okay? Right now we don't. That's, we just need to know. This could happen to us again down, down the road. It would be nice to have something to understand. And it's not your fault. Oh, it's certainly not Matt's fault. It's just, you know. Still not the result we're looking for. But we're not saying no, because we can't say no. I understand. It's just you know a I mean? timing, timing thing. Well, I think that's could be probably pretty fast. I don't think it's effective. Someone will look back on that and write it. Who's in charge of that, Kate? Oh. Dylan O'Connor is the chair. I will oh, reach okay. out to him. I, didn't know that. I will reach okay. out to planning staff. I will reach out to town engineer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we move on to the um, Emmett Conservation Land, the ATV and dirt bike activity. Looks like there was some. Yeah. Um, Name for the record, please. Yeah. Don Yalia, Mark Minton right. Drive. Yeah. Um, back in the board, I think I lost. Did this one need to come up again at the next meeting? Yes, it will yeah. be yeah. discussed. September 14th. Yes. Yeah. September 14th? Yeah. I think it's. Yeah. So I assume that you printed the letter. Oh, the email that I sent. And you can see the photo that I sent also, which uh, shows. The uh, tracks uh, on the pond trail, not this year. But, uh, but, I mean, it's it, it, this is this is what it looks like in a wet year, or even not a dry year. But in the summer, it's there's constant ATV use, and this actually in the last couple years, it's been dirt bikes more than ATVs. Um, that are constantly used. Um, so the pond trail is sort of like a magnet for you know people, horses, and machines. They all congregate around the pond. Um, and uh, the other area that has a, a lot of 
uh, dirt bike use especially is the uh, what's known as the Little Desert, um, which is over by the golf course. If you go down the Marsh Trail from Texas Road, it, you Somebody just go straight it. and that will bring you to um, into the uh, into the uh, the what's called the little desert if you keep going it'll bring you to the uh, to the golf course I don't have the map with me but it doesn't matter there's ATV <laughs> the, the dirt bikes are using the area very constantly now uh, they come in from uh, occasionally from uh, trail side uh, mostly from uh, Vinebrook and uh, and off of the uh, the old railroad bed that the Kennedy family owns, mm -hmm. um, so and they and like I said in the in my email, there are actually twenty connections or access points, mostly from private property. So in my mind, it makes sense to. I mean, I, I mean I've been seeing this for years. I've uh, you know talk to uh, um, uh, folks about it for for a long time on the Westford Conservation Trust you know doing you know the doing the trail there's work signs on the which I there's a, there are signs uh, there are signs and, and the trailheads at the, at the commission the that the Commission owns at Texas Road and at Trailside right. Trailside is certainly higher and a little bit more uh, inconspicuous than the one at Texas Road, but it is present. So there are, there are signs there that would inform a rider. Coming in from those two properties, do again, we, right. you know, do we have and any? those are the two, and those are two trailheads that the commission has under its care and custody. Okay. So, so right. are we so allowed from to? From Vinebrook, we would have to go, so that was something that, that the, the Vinebrook Trust. Homeowners Association would have to be right. posting a sign there. Well, there are there are signs that are coming off of Vinebrook. Right. Again, I didn't okay. go look at Vinebrook because okay. it's not our not okay, our. Okay, so you, you just looked at the right. ones that are under our jurisdiction. Yes. Can there be any fines attached to this or no? Um, for ATV, I mean, yes. I think under the rules and regs, uh, the commission has promulgated for their properties. Um, yes, I'm pretty sure there is. You know, same same as the no alcohol, no grilling. You know that. So so the signs don't say that there's a penalty. Signs no, they don't. Just say, okay. They just say uh, no motorized. Prohibited. Right. So yeah. we have the right then to also ask the police department to to go through the area. Yep. Or or so. Do you see any suggestions that you think would help? Well, the sign. What I what suggested signage? was was signs on the trails, right on the trees, next to the trail. At high, you know, just above eye level. Because every time I've spoken to and argued with ATV riders and dirt bike riders four times, and they've always said, I didn't see a sign, mm -hmm. even though they've gone right by the signs. Would they have listened to the signs? No, of course was? they would. Right. So but, I, I mean, but that's the, my, but the point yeah. is, is that signs it say becomes something less about credible the at the same time. I, I think, no, because no, I think what we really need to do is, is it sounds like we need to connect um people who notice the behavior getting a call into the police department because it's really the police department that should be speaking to the riders right. and and starting the enforcement but process. i've talked to the police several times okay and they always say well we have to catch them in the act yes and we have to see you know and i've even i've tracked it back to the people's property and they still say that we don't really know that that's where they came from. It's it, like, they have to see them. Right, and you know, they're gone by the time the police show up. I mean, it's, it's, you, it's, 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 it would be a fortuitous circumstance that the police would happen to be there when they are there. Uh -huh. um, and so, and even if they did, they're gonna zoom off on, on, their, on their dirt bike and the police aren't gonna be able to chase them. So what's the resolution? I, I mean, you know, what's the, what's so the resolution? So what I had suggested how, how was, we... was at least stop the ATVs from coming in at the two boulders. major places by putting in boulders at... And won't they just go around the boulders with their ATVs or... or, or Especially if they or are dirt bikes. Cut, 
or well, yeah. Well, with dirt bikes, it's not going to work, right? But at least it keeps the ATVs out. The thing is that the places where there are boulders now on Texas Road, ATVs do not come in there. Dirt bikes do, but the ATVs do not because there are large trees on the side and you know and there are big boulders so texas road is okay um trail side is is an is an is an opening that you could drive a tractor trailer through um and you know there's a there's a gate on one side and then the other major trail is a uh is is a very wide opening and the same thing on vinebrook too Okay, so Vinebrook is is the responsibility of the Vinebrook Homeowners but, Association. But there's but there's but it's on conservation. But you can put in boulders right as you come onto the pond trail, and that's conservation property. I, I'm not ref, the pond trail. I don't understand. You know, use the point. But, use the orange button. Point. You know, where the pond trail is. I'm not. You know. Okay. Can you? Matt, can you zoom in a little well, bit? Well, there's a, there's a trail that goes all the way around Kennedy Pond. Yeah, okay. okay. So, so it would be like right here, there, I guess. There, I think there, there are boulders there. If there are boulders on the sides, but there is one big entrance. You know, the, the, there's, a, there's a big area mm -hmm. where, uh, where it's on Vinebrook land, where it's almost like a it's, it's where the old pump, where the pump house used to be, but just past that. There's a large area there. They have a fire pit and all kinds of things, but it's on the combined brook land. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and, but if you come in off of that straight towards the pond, there, there's a few trails that go off to the side. Most of them have boulders on it, but the one trail that's very wide goes straight to the pond and there's no, it, there's nothing blocking, it, it, you know. Would it be I helpful can, to have pictures of the? Yeah, I it, can go out. I no, can no, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. I mean, I can meet you no, there I'm if you thinking. if you want, and you could I can show you what I'm talking about. Well, I, because I think it sounds to me like you've, you're seeing locations where you think that boulders would help to block the ATVs. Um, is that something that? A few years ago, they they actually put out boulders in a few areas, I but not in this that, okay. except for this one opening, um, and uh, and it's it's still there. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I we can I can certainly go out find those locations to, and you know if you know well, get boulders out there. If you if you can't find it, send me an email. Well, I, I'll be glad I, to meet you. I, okay. Um, yeah. And so, and then the other thing was, because that's not going to help with the dirt bikes, is the trail maintenance. And the, the standard practice for the, uh, for the trust trail maintenance crew is to remove everything from the, from the trails that falls on it from the entire way. And most of the trails are wide enough for ATVs to go on. So I'm suggesting that when a tree, tree falls, and I did this a week, two weeks ago on one of the trails, is cut off all the, all the branches, but leave the trunk there so that people can step over it, but it keeps ATVs and dirt bikes from blasting over the trail. And I, and I have a concern with that because if I start to think about people who maybe have mobility challenges or somebody's out there with um, a stroller. And, and uh, I, I understand that. No, no, none of the trails that I'm taught, most of the trails have, are steep, they're rocky, and have roots. So they're, these they're are not trails that you're going to be pushing a stroller okay. on. So, so the these pond are, trail's different. It's very flat. It's, it, and... So you're talking about trails that are yeah, already challenging I, to walk. And I've never seen a stroller on any of the trails okay. in this area. Okay. Um, and 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 if you if you have mobility issues, you're not going to be able to walk. Okay. So the, these are trails where. Okay. Uh, so the it's, rough uh, trails. Uh, okay. Right. Um, one. Okay, Marilyn. Okay, I had a couple of thoughts in my head. One is, I'm assuming that you have made connections with. You're on conservation trust. 
I, I work on, I do the trail work with Bill Harmon's okay. group on a so, regular basis. So yes. a, a multi-group that gets together who represent different trails and can talk about what they find collectively, bring more power to the, you know, with, with the multiple voices, and find out also what other towns do. What are all the things you can do, you know? And then mimic some that can be done. Uh, so that they know what works and what doesn't work. What you've done is useful well, because we know where the area is that we have to block off if nothing right. else. A lot, of, a lot of the other towns, I've talked to folks in Groton who've also had ATV issues, not as bad as this place. Uh, they use trail cams. They use what? Tra trail cams. Trail cameras. Yep. Uh, I'm not, and I'm not games like trail a game cameras. camera. Oh, yeah. cameras. Oh, yeah, yeah. that sounds so that, great. So that you can, right. But the, the, I didn't suggest that because there's a lot more maintenance. You know, you, you have to set it up. There's a lot more. And there's a cost. And there's a lot, of, a lot more cost to it. But, right. But so that makes it's sense in, to the police and, department. Right. I mean, they have it actually at, at, in Groton. They actually have it tied into the police so that they can see the camera real time on some of the trail. Worth finding out what that cost. Uh, <laughs> well, I say that because of CPC funds again. I don't know whether or not that's something. Trail cameras, they're like under 100 bucks now. No, I but think. I'm, oh. thinking, I'm thinking in terms yeah, of a group so coming anyway. forward. I sit what? on CPC. Yeah. A group coming forward uh, for help to preserve our open space. So whether or not that would be valid would be worth making an inquiry whether, you know, funds I don't know if come. you're allowed to buy equipment, though. I don't know, but that we ask those questions, okay? But That's all I'm so, suggesting. So actually, Don, um, with the trail I'll maintenance group, have you, have you discussed with them um, the proposal that in a place where dirt bikes are an issue is, is leaving downed trunks in place as an impediment? I have, and they, they agree in principle but it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So what I guess I'm, I don't know. So I, I can do that again. So, okay. you know, it, well, it's actually, okay. I, I usually take the summer off from trail work because I'm busy gardening all, and okay. that's when they're doing the trail work. But, um, but I can do that next month when I start back up again. I can talk to them more seriously. I, that's why I copied Dave Ebbotson on the, on the email. Mm -hmm. Because he's the one, not only is the head of the Conservation Trust, but he also is the he he also manages the tree removal group. So so he would be what the one giving the direction. Yes. Um, because I guess maybe one of the ways to say is if the Emmett Conservation Land is having this serious a problem on some of the trails, do this as a pilot project that said leaving some of the trunks. Does that help us address the issue? You know, and if and if it's if it's successful on those trails, then maybe it becomes something that it becomes a tool that we've got to deal with the issue. If we if the it's like the right. eating the invasive plants, that's another way to do something. Yeah, and, and we can talk to some of the people and see if they're actually having problems with getting you know walking over the trunk. Yeah, I've done that with the one that I've taken out where I've left the trunk there. It's one of the main trails that goes to the pond, and all of the swimmers and partiers and people like that walk over that, and uh, and dog walkers, and the no liability. And they have no that. one has complained. Everyone okay. that has no actually thanked me for that. taking out what I took out. Okay. So um, so far it has not been a problem. Okay. But I like the idea of using it as a pilot program. Yeah, and I can I can suggest that to Dave Evanson. Yeah, that, that if and, and Matt said yeah. he could do some boulders. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So a combination. I know, I know no one subdivision that's got a surplus. So that would be a combination of oh, places. Okay, that would be good. A couple subdivisions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds and then, good. And then do report back to us so that yeah. we can work together. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, the the um, enforcement order. The one, yeah, the one fifteen Concord. So we have lots of enforcement orders. One fifteen yeah. Concord. Yes, it's great. Okay. Um, this is all that stuff. The LSP followed up with a whole slew of information in terms of. Sorry, I'm trying to find his email. Um, pull it up. Um, it gave some 
time frames, you know, scheduling, testing of um, materials, and then again, there's an uh, IR, the incident response action. Uh, <coughs> the Bureau of Waste Site Management gets a uh, waste, waste site cleanup, gets a status update no later than September 1st. I'll be copied on that. We'll provide that to the commission. Um, he went into detail on the types of materials that was found, including metal tires, concrete, asphalt, and containers, storage trailers. They have trailer. spillage, too. Hmm? They have spillage, too. I don't think they had, sp I think they're testing for spillage. That's, they're putting in a monitoring, they reached out about monitoring wells, and that's consistent with uh, both, you know, monitoring well, the installation of monitoring wells uh, is consistent with both the act and the bylaws, uh, rules and regulations, especially for monitoring. You know, that's a good thing. We do want people to be, you know, put in a monitoring well for, so that we can actually get results as to what's, uh, you know, is if anything was spilled, what's in the actual water table. Mm -hmm. um, a site plan was provided. Um, I do, I spoke with Jim earlier this week. Um, did raise the question about where the oil um, tank was found. He wanted just that to be noted. Um, additionally, um, the LSP did provide some great photos of all the various things that they found. Uh, lots of tires, metal, concrete. Because they were supposed to get, you know, when they, whenever the state got their plan, we were supposed to get a copy of it. Right, and, and I mean, there's still, and I think I did include the IR, the actual, yeah, the in immediate response action, that's what it was. Yeah. Um, both the state form, which is what it is, um, but also the actual um, submittal that was prepared by the LSP, which does go into detail a little bit more. Again, this was at the beginning of the project back in June, um, so It'll be interesting to uh, see what the update, the September 1st update is, has, and we'll include that uh, for the commission, because I do think this submittal is going to change somewhat, or there's going to be more information, um, you know, the figures. Um, so we shall, uh, if the commission has any questions. Um, Jim had mentioned, um, interest in the documentation, the um, disposal receipt, and the test results showing um, no asbestos. Is that, would I that can, normally be part of the, the package that gets put together for this large thing? This I can ask. Okay. And yeah. if not, I can also ask for that just, you know, so that we have the information that the bill of lading and the asbestos testing. Yeah. That. Um, yeah, that I think, you know, it just, Dotted guys and crossing keys. Yep. Hopefully the first and the last. Yeah, I don't know. These aren't fun. I don't want to do more of these. Uh, asbestos. Next item also is a one. Jim's tree. plantings. <laughs> the plantings. I have a I have a quote. Didn't make it in the packet, but I got a quote. I'll provide it with you. It's you okay. know, okay. a couple blue, blueberries, some big blue big big blue stem, but it's a grass, and then a, a service berry, which you know gets to 25 feet tall. I was like, okay. I mean, it's a be the most well vegetated. <laughs> Per, per 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 square foot. Jim would be telling me how many Jim. days it's yeah, been, right. so you know, I, I missed the count. I don't have the date anymore. So David after Jim. Yeah, the Jim. Yeah. Oh, please, could we? Oh my God, that'd be great. Um, so there, it's not done yet, but you know we're okay. getting to hopefully okay. wetter well, and cooler weather, which yeah, will be I mean, ideal for planting. Put it in the ground now. Right, we're getting to actual planting weather, so that's yeah. the that's the goal. Okay. Okay. Any minutes. So the minutes. Five hundred and two days. <laughs> Thank I don't you. believe you. Check your math. Um, so the minutes for the August 10th um, meeting. Um, I had a couple of editorial ones. Um, in the second paragraph under open forum, Bill Harmon's last name was misspelled. Um, it should be Harman, not Harmon. Like Mark Harmon. 
Um, and then on page five, in the last full paragraph, there's a redundant A in the system has had a failed a Title V inspection. And then um, under Greystone Pond, I was quoted as saying that, or commenting that the property owner, um, when soliciting interest from potential buyers, um, my, my comment was really more that if somebody wants to address the issue, there is now an approved approach. Um, I really wasn't. And that's captured in the previous sentence, correct? So we, Just strike the last yeah, sentence? So let's strike the last sentence because I wasn't suggesting that anybody was looking to talk to potential buyers. Okay. So um, does anybody else have any comments on the minutes? Nope. nope. Okay. So can I have a motion to approve the minutes for the August 10th, 2022? As, as, as amended. amended. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. Okay. Um, did people? People had a chance to review the minutes from the August, the executive session? Yes. Yes. Um, any comments or feedback? Or any comments or corrections? They're fine. Okay. So can I have a motion to approve um, the, ex the minutes of the executive session on August 10th, 2022? Approve them but not release them? Correct. Correct. So moved. Second. All those in favor, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Margaret? Yes. So those are also approved. Um, no site visits to record, no site visits to schedule. Um, just our executive session? Yep. Okay. So by roll the call in the end. Yes. I have a script. Okay. Yeah. Come out in public, but not yes. to resume meeting. Okay. Okay. So, can I have a motion to enter an executive session to consider the purchase or value of real property as an open session may have a detrimental effect on the town's negotiating position and reconvene in open session solely for the purpose of adjourning the meeting? I roll call. So moved. Second. Okay, so. Ann and, and uh, Noel. Yeah, so, so now by roll call vote, Eric? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Noel? Yes. Ann? Yes. And Margaret? Yes.